in a post-Christian world, B.C., before Christ, has become B.C.E., before the Common Era. And A.D., in the year of our Lord, has become C.E., Common Era. Nevertheless, the dividing point before the Common Era and the Common Era is Christ. This little chat that I want to share with you looks at the work of Christ, the life and work of Christ, the atonement, and three passages in the New Testament that are pillar passages for having an accurate biblical understanding of Christian thinking about the work of Christ. I'm Dr. Rick Durst, and I teach Christian theology at Golden Gate Baptist Theological Seminary. And I don't think anybody should think that they hold Christian truth without having biblical passages to back it up. And here are three. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 45, Jesus said, For even the Son of Man, Jesus' favorite title for himself, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. The plan of God in Christ was that Christ would give his life for others, that he would give his life as a ransom to set free. He would come as a goel, as a redeemer. In the Old Testament, there's this idea that when people get into a financial or personal jam, they need somebody to rescue them. And it would usually be a kinsman who would come for redemption. But if we are unable to find anybody who can rescue us, God has said, I will provide you a kinsman redeemer. And that's what Jesus does in coming and giving that ransom for us. Second idea is in 1 Corinthians 15, 3. Now, there are many theories of the atonement. By the way, atonement is an old, ancient word. It means at one -ment. Two who have become separated become one by a specific action of reconciliation. And this is God's plan for us in Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3, the Apostle Paul is saying, I'm passing on tradition. Like the Olympic runner who runs his uh, turn around the track and then passes the baton, Paul is passing the Christological baton to us uh, and explaining what he received, what became transformative to him, and he wants to pass it on to us so it will be the same way. Now, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 is a well-known passage because it talks about Christ's resurrection and ours and how they're connected. But in verse 3, it says this, For what I received, I passed on to you, as of first importance, I love that phrase, as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. This was not a last minute plan. This was prophesied. Isaiah 53, Psalm 22, and many other passages says that God will send one who will suffer for us. And Paul's saying, it's happened. He's come. He died for our sins. So the economic meaning of the atonement is Christ died for our sins so that the guilt the alienation that has come into my life with reference to God is taken away there's nothing that separates me from God anymore through faith in Christ the third pillar passage is Hebrews chapter 9 now this whole passage is an understanding of Jesus's job description as the Messiah as the great high priest and uh, in this passage, it shows the work of the high priest. Now, typically, um, the high priest is responsible for Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, once a year, where he would take the blood of a perfect lamb in to offer an atoning sacrifice. But this great high priest is different because he does not bring the blood of a lamb. He's the lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Uh, John described him, but Hebrews picks it up too. Verse 11, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. When Christ came as a high priest of the good things that are already here, he came, uh, he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is not man-made, that is to say, not a part of this creation. He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves. He entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood. Once for all. 
it's not necessary to have an annual sacrifice anymore. He's done it once for all, having obtained eternal redemption, redemption that lasts. The blood of goats and bulls and ashes of heifers sprinkled on those who are ceremonial unclean sanctify them so that they were outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. That's a nice reference to the Trinity there. The Son, the Spirit, the Father. Cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. The atoning work of Christ lays down that blood so that, and without blood there's no remissions of sin, it says later in this passage, so that we might serve the living God ourselves. We enter into that service through the blood of Christ. These are three pillar passages to understanding God's perspective on what he was doing in the world by becoming a man and dying on the cross and being raised from the dead to give newness of life to us. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll watch some of the other videos as well.